Dana White has just announced that Jon Jones will be stepping out of the UFC main event for UFC 295, and we will be getting the interim title fight matchup in the heavyweight division between Sergey Pavlovich and Tom Aspinall. I'm not sure why Sipe Miocic isn't like in there because we know Sergey Pavlovich was supposed to be the backup fighter for this fight, so I'm not sure why Sipe is not fighting on this card. Maybe he didn't want to fight one of these guys. Maybe he just wanted the Jon Jones fight for the title and then hopefully just retire after. I don't know, but this is the fight that's been made. I believe Jon Jones has has torn a peck which is really sad to see but on the other hand like I don't want to see John Jones get hurt he's probably going to ride off in the sunset after this match but think about it this way if they don't end up rescheduling John Jones versus Steve Miocic which, which I kind of don't want them to do whoever wins this matchup will fight John Jones and I think that's a much more interesting matchup and a lot I think a lot of people would actually want that matchup instead of the Stipe Miocic matchup so um, I actually am kind of liking the situation we're in now I mean both of the fights that are on this card are actually pretty good so I'm not too angry about it like Prohaska versus Pereira is a really fun fight and uh, Sergey Pavlovich versus Aspinall will be a really fun fight as well I think this card's gonna end up being super underrated now the people that spent thousands of dollars to see John Jones's last fight at MSG that's a little bit rough you're probably not gonna get your money back on that either so I mean uh, that sucks a little bit but again these are some really fun fights anyways so I'm going to actually give my preview and prediction for this matchup because I believe it is in like a couple weeks now. So um, a very interesting fight we have here. I am going to, well, I, I won't, I won't say who I think is going to win yet. Why don't we go over uh, whose guys are coming off of wins again. So uh, Sergey Pavlovich last fight was a win over Curtis Blades before then. I believe he was the backup fighter for Cyril Gaon and John Jones. Beat Curtis Blades, I think like a couple months after. So he made two weight cuts and became the backup fighter for John Jones versus CPA Miocic. So an absolute beast in Sergey Pavlovich. And both of these guys taking this fight on short notice is actually incredible. It kind of shows uh, the kind of fighters that they have in the UFC. Like we saw that with uh, Alexander Volkanovsky stepping on short notice against Islam. And the same thing with Usman stepping in the short notice against Hamza Chemaev. Like this is just another example of how good the UFC is. We know Sergey Pavlovich, I guess, was kind of preparing anyways. But the fact that both of these guys were able to jump on the title shot is pretty cool to see. So um, just adding on to that, Tom Aspinall in his last fight beat Martian Tybura. I believe he was uh, or he was injured against a Curtis Blades. I think he like destroyed his ACL or whatever. Um, came back. It, it was a pretty much a 50 fight, 50, 50 fight. It was like 50 seconds into the round and he pretty much got his knee injured. So it really sucked to see that. And we didn't really know who's going to win there. Cause they, they started going at it. It was like a hundred miles per hour, which I was really hoping uh, we could see a little bit more of, but didn't end up happening. Came back against Martian Tybura, absolutely destroyed him. Um, and that's like what number 10 ranked Martian Tybura, and he's not a bad fighter at all. So he just ran right through him, looked really good in there. And I think this was going to be the fight they're, they're going to make anyways. I think if John Jones or CB Miocic won and they ended up retiring, I think this fight would have been the actual heavyweight matchup. So my guess is John Jones is going to come back, so that's why they're going to make this an interim title fight, or they're just going to have it just in case. But again, great fight, but I am going to go with Tom Aspinall, and here's why. I've been thinking about this fight for quite a bit because I thought this was going to be the matchup they, they made. I know it kind of sucks for Cyril Gaon, but dude, you got to fight another opponent. You're not going to get another title shot. Like, that's absolutely insane. You're not selling fights, so um, or not at least like the high tier, S tier uh, type fighters that are selling fights so you're not that big of a name so you're not going to get the title shot I'm sorry you lost to Francis Ngannou which already kind of marks you off to getting another title shot let's be real the UFC wants someone um, that's gonna not be I guess a, a loss to Francis Ngannou just to bolster up their heavyweight division so um, that, that's what they want that's why they want a John Jones or, or someone else like that kind of just take the mantle but I'm gonna go with Tom Aspinall in this fight uh, Sergey Pavlovich does have a really big reach advantage, and again, he's very active, good power in his hands. Uh, he does fight with a lot of range, which is pretty much his go-to. Like he, de he's destroyed some of these guys uh, that are pretty heavy power punchers, like your Derek Lewis's, your Tai Tui bosses, very quickly as well. A lot of those guys are super scrappy. Again, he was just able to stay on the outside and just destroy them from the outside. And uh, he beat up Curtis Blades kind of similarly as well. And that was a very interesting matchup, and a, and a matchup that kind of would propel him or kind of just keep him at a little bit of a tier in that heavyweight division and he kind of excelled through there it did look a little bit worrying for me early on because i did pick sergey pavlovich especially early on with the the early picks i stuck my well, I, I won't say i stuck my head out but I, I was picking him early on when not a lot of people were picking him because the curse blades wrestling factor was pretty interesting but 
Sergey Pavlovich looked really good early on. Well, he was losing a little bit early on. It was back and forth. And then Sergey Pavlovich's power just landed and caught Chris Blades with like an uppercut. That was super nice. Chris Blades went for a takedown, just couldn't get it. So we haven't necessarily seen the full extent of Sergey Pavlovich's wrestling at this point. I, I know it kind of answered a little bit of questions for some people in that matchup. But again, it was a rock to Curtis Blades. So I won't take it too far into account because a lot of people were pointing at that Alex... Um, Alistair Overeem fight where he kind of just got taken down and ground and pounded which didn't look too great for him but he does have a sambo background it has been a few years since that fight so it is going to be very interesting to see what those transitions look like because in my opinion I think Tom Aspinall needs to go out there and take down Sergey Pavlovich and this is actually going to be a really decent test for Tom Aspinall's shin we don't really know what Tom Aspinall's shin is going to look like because we haven't really seen him lose by KO at all like he's 13 and 3 um has he ever lost by KO heel hook uh, illegal 12 to 6 elbow and injury so you, you've never really seen him hurt in the UFC I kind of want to see what that looks like he's kind of steamrolled through some of these guys as well round one against Sergey Spivak looks really good um, Alexander Volkov really good win as well Curtis Blades again ended due to injury so we didn't get to see the full extent of that but whew, I, I mean I think Tom Aspinall can go out there and take down Sergey Pavlovich in my opinion um, again, we don't know the full extent of Sergey Pavlovich's defensive wrestling, Sambo background, um, how it looks like right now. But I do think that, I won't say one of the main reasons, but I think one of the reasons why he's able to defend that takedown against Curtis Blades is because Curtis Blades was rocked. And maybe he'll prove that uh, wrong this time. But again, the power of Sergey Pavlovich versus Tom Aspinall to see how his chin is. Because again, we haven't seen that tested. And he's from the UK. A lot of those guys get chin for some reason. I'm not saying anything, but... Um, it, it does seem like they're a little bit chinny. So I, I don't understand it. Like uh, Darren Till, Leon Edwards got rocked by Nate Diaz. Um, I mean, it, even even when like in, you watch these guys, it feels like they're just bound to get like chinned. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it just feels that way. Patty Pimblett, I don't think has the best chin. I mean, it's an all right chin, um, but that's just going over a couple of them. I'm sure there's a bunch of uh, ones you can think of, but. In my opinion, I think Tom Aspinall is going to be the faster guy. Sergio Havlovich, again, is going to have the range. And Curtis Blades did have like an 80-inch reach. So he was able to touch up Sergey Pavlovich a little bit. But Tom Aspinall, I think, can go out there, I'll land some really good strikes, put the pressure on Pavlovich. Pavlovich is going to stay at range. And we'll kind of see what he does against some of the early takedowns of uh, Tom Aspinall. I'm sure Sergey Pavlovich has been working on his wrestling since it was going to be against Stipe or John Jones. So I'm hoping that he was working on it a little bit more and he, he continues to work on it because it did look a little bit rough against Alistair Overeem. But I think Tom Aspinall can go out there and take him down and then beat him up on the ground, in my opinion, and maybe get like a first or second round finish here. I, I mean, I really do like Sergey Pavlov, which he is one of my favorite fighters. It's not my favorite fighter in the heavyweight division, but I think I don't think he's a one-trick pony. But I, I think Tom Aspinall is just really skilled in a lot of places. He's a lot more balanced, in my opinion. And again, a lot of this is riding on the fact that we haven't seen someone really push Sergey Pavlovich in the wrestling since that last fight uh, in Alistair, against Alistair Overeem. So that's going to be a really big question mark. That's why I really love this fight is two of the biggest contenders in the heavyweight division that are pretty intriguing. Like we haven't gotten those answers from them yet. And now they're coming against each other and they're, and they're going to fight. So... I think it is going to be Tom Aspinall, and I'm going to say this. If Tom Aspinall beats Sergey Pavlovich by finish, I think he beats John Jones as well. I, I don't know if that's going to be a hot take at all, but um, I, I think it is for quite a bit of people. John Jones in the last fight against Cyril Gaon, he was moving around really slow. I know he's carrying extra weight, but it looked like he was carrying a lot of extra weight. And I, I think Tom Aspinall is really good on the ground. I think he's actually going to be the one uh, to give John Jones a really tough test in that heavyweight division, or I mean in general in that division. I won't say light heavyweight because it's a little bit different since when he left against Dominic Reyes, but I don't know. I, I, I think Tom Aspinall could do it against John Jones. I think he could finish him. Maybe not necessarily finish John Jones, but I think he could beat him. Really good on the ground, really good on the feet, fast on the feet as well. I'm really intrigued by that matchup. I kind of want to see that a little bit more here. A lot of people are pointing at Sergey Pavlovich as the guy to beat John Jones, but I think it's Tom Aspinall. I think he's really balanced everywhere, which is why I'm going to go with him in this matchup. I'll probably say by finish um, because we haven't seen Sergey Pavlovich really go to the distance in his fight. I mean, yeah, he's gone to three unanimous decisions. Has he even been to a decision in the UFC? Um, yeah, he hasn't even been to a decision in the UFC round one, round one, round one. 
uh, round one, round one, round one, round one. So he hasn't even gone outside the first round in the UFC, which is absolutely insane. So I'm going to have to go Tom Aspinall probably in the second round. Um, I think it does get a little bit more competitive on the feet. I think he does take down Pavlovich, and I think he does beat him up quite a bit. Maybe he gets a submission over Pavlovich on the ground, but I can also see like TKO strikes or something like that, like kind of getting on his back and pinning him down, uh, flattening him out. So I'm going to go with Tom Aspinall in this matchup as my early prediction, and I think they do Tom Aspinall versus John Jones in about a year. Hopefully, not hopefully, but I do think Stipe probably retires if he doesn't end up getting that matchup. And I think even John Jones has pointed at Tom Aspinall as being like one of the most talented like he sees him as the champion so again a very interesting matchup that i really want to see is tom asimov versus john jones but he's going to have to get through sergey pavlovich and sergey pavlovich is a beast so um let me know what you guys think about this matchup down below in the comments and i'll see you guys next time